Danico says, is there a way to change the URL uh, URL address once a SharePoint file is restored? Some users use Office Online, and every time a file is removed and then put back, restored, with the same name, you have to send the new link to all users who use it online. I actually just tested this out with my team because this came up and somebody was asking about this. Um, and he here's what happens. It's very confusing. What happens when you put back a, a, a document, it overwrites the original document. That's first of all, you know, it should say this document already exists. Do you want to replace it? Yes. When you click the share link, it will give you a different unique URL, which is interesting, but the first link still works. So what you have to do is have your link, maintain that link, and not click the share link again, but use the original link and it will continue to work when you restore it, but it will give you a new link every single time you upload that document and you click on share again, which is insane. I don't know why it does it, but it does it. In addition, I did put a note in there. So there is something called unique doc IDs. And if you set up unique doc IDs and enable it on the site collection um, that you're working with, it will assign a unique ID to every single item or every single document that's, uh, it's not, data so not list but libraries it will assign a unique id and as long as it stays within the site you can move it folders you can move it libraries as long as it stays in the same site that link will stay good for the life of that particular file whether you replace it whether you rename it whether you move it it will always stay the same so the two things i would say is number one no that that first link will still work, even if it gives you a different one. And second of all, enable unique IDs because, or enable unique doc IDs because it does make your life a lot easier. Sharon, on that, you know, in the way that I, I read it more is, and you're absolutely correct, because a lot of people don't realize that SharePoint has got like follow me links. So it will continue to keep working, you know. But if in this instance, it looks like what he's saying is they've removed the file, like they've deleted the file and they've mm. restored the file back in. So, so, and if you've done something like a delete and a restore, then no, there's nothing you can do in regards to edit yep. the link and make it the same again. Document. It is done. It, it does, the system doesn't know. It's it's a different yes. document. Yes, you've actually completely removed it. It's now a whole new document and you're done and you're going to have to generate a whole new link. It's as simple as that. Um, but if you do any one of the other behaviours, um, you know, SharePoint and OneDrive and that are all great at doing, uh, you know, you're moving it around. It'll just follow it, whether it's in, you know, you're doing it in Teams because you've got SharePoint in the back end, whether you're doing it for physically from SharePoint or OneDrive, no problems. But if you go delete a file, <laughs> um, you're done. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a scenario besides that. I mean, like deleted it. Oh no, we needed that. Um, I mean, do, going through that that restore process is usually when oh we you know we selected too many files and deleted them, and the one we needed we just deleted. Go back in and and restore that. I mean, is there another scenario where this, this is like this has happened? That's commonly done because again, I think the the answer is I think exactly what you said, Kirsty is is if it's deleted you add it back in, it's looking at it as a new document. The only other it's scenario I can think about is if maybe there's a workflow process behind the scenes where you're changing, like doing something with the file. So maybe you're deleting it out of one place and then restoring it back to somewhere else, or you're moving that file um, in some way. So like maybe, so sometimes people will do this. It's not the right answer, but they do it is that in a workflow, they will actually use that feature to hide or remove something and then bring it back to life so that it's because they don't use it permissions correctly or they don't do it a different way. I've actually seen people use that as a workaround to like get it out of the library and then put it back in a certain time frame. Um, so, I mean, mm -hmm. I've seen people use that for the wrong reasons, but in general, yeah, typically it's because either somebody didn't realize that they deleted the wrong thing or somebody accidentally, you know, deleted a whole folder or whole library or something. Yeah, it's training training really training it's like why are they deleting in the first place are they thinking it's based on like last like other ways do they understand that you got file versioning and that they could actually go back or you know like back and forward in file versioning often they don't understand the nature of what's going on with the file and they might delete I mean there could be the accidental delete like you said Christian but there's also a lot of times we go tell people don't 
delete it. What you could do is even just create an archive folder that's within, you know, like old file archive and just move it into that folder instead of deleting it. And then mm-hmm. you've kind of retained it and it's still there if you really need to move it rather than delete it. And then you can go back later on into the archive folder and go, is there any of these files that we still actually need? And then go, no, we're definitely not. We're six months past the project or whatever and go delete those older archive files. I just say, I, I don't like to delete things unless I've really got a reason to, um, and then I'll do a yep. big cleanup. Yeah. I wonder it's, if this is an admin who had a large library and somebody was just like getting overzealous about cleaning up and now the admin is stuck updating all the links. Yeah, <laughs> potentially. Like, is yeah. there a faster way to do this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, create a brand new permission that's called no delete. Yeah, just create a SharePoint permission level that is contribute, no delete and remove delete from the equation. And then you don't have to deal with that. True, true. I mean, so many organizations I'm dealing with, especially across Gov, um, it, 20 years, they've got to keep their information. So nothing, even if you delete a team, yep, it still is maintained kind of in the back end and therefore you can't regenerate or do anything. You can restore that particular one, of, but it doesn't delete a thing everywhere. So it, you kind of go, what teams have you got? It's like, oh, geez, <laughs> there's hundreds here. None are being used, created and deleted. Yep. So know why start from the right stuff in the first place. It makes you want to get into the storage business, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no. It just sounds like that sounds like just pure pain, Sharon. Thanks very much, but no. no. <laughs> Thank you.